Let's talk about the coronation. And, of course, those scenes on the balcony, that iconic photograph of the family posing for the world's press. Well, was that photo terribly white? That was the verdict of Bridgerton star Adjoa Andoa, who, while speaking on ITV, drew a contrast between the diversity on display during the service at Westminster Abbey and the aftermath when the family gathered on the balcony. So what do we think? Was the balcony too white, Lin May? Well, yeah, not too white. It was white, and there's nothing wrong with it being white. I don't understand. The way how she made it seem was that it was a negative thing, it was a bad thing. And, you know, especially people from my community, our whole aim has been to, you know, ensure that there isn't this inequality or this racism or whatever the case may be. So for her to now make people feel like to be white is a bad thing is just counterproductive, from my opinion. OK, what do you think, Neil? I think it was just a, a really inappropriate comment, I'll be honest, because I thought what I loved about, and I watched everything to do with the coronation yesterday, what I thought was fabulous about it was, clearly we have a thousand years of history, and lots of that coronation ceremony yesterday were steeped in history mm. and, and uh, tradition. There was an awful lot, though, that changed. It moved on an awful lot from 1952, from Elizabeth II, you know, just from the, the, the gospel choir, at, uh, the different accents, the voices, the female bishops. There was so much in there that was different. Yeah. And there was an awful lot of diversity on the show. I thought it was a brilliantly balanced, fabulous, you know, celebration uh, and a modern coronation of our wonderful nation. So I think to say that, the reality is the royal family are white. I mean, I think if you'd put people, token people of another colour in there, I think that's what it would have been. And that's ridiculous. I think this is... They're a white family. I can't see that's not the problem. I think if they'd done nothing in the ceremony, people might have quite, uh, may have had a problem with it. This so reminds I me of a story a couple of years ago. Do you remember this, Emma, when a young woman went on holiday and she posted, she was with two mates uh, and they were in Ibiza or somewhere, and somebody commented on the photo that it was a very white group. It was just three girls on holiday getting drunk and chasing boys. Um, I mean, this is ridiculous too. It's hard to make families diverse, isn't it? Well, I mean, not over generations, but yeah, in a moment, yeah. For me, the um, the question isn't is that balcony scene too white? It is that is who their family is. You always put the family on the balcony. I, I the bigger question for me is why is one family in charge of all of this? Um, I didn't watch the coronation. Um, but I also don't want to be the Grinch. Other people have enjoyed it and loved it and had a lovely day. That's great. I took myself off to the cinema. Fine. And you didn't have to fight for a seat? I did not. Well, actually, it was quite full, but, yeah, that, that's... Uh... Well, I hope it was a diverse crowd, because it's 2023. <laughs> it was East London, mate. <laughs> Does it get more diverse? Uh, well, look, let's get the views of the uh, legendary royal photographer Ian Pelham-Turner, who has worked with five generations of the royal family and won royal awards for the first official Christmas photograph of Prince William, Prince Charles and Princess Diana at Kensington Palace in 1982. Ian has just opened an ex exhibition of exclusive royal pictures going back to 1935, which can now be seen at the Lansdowne Club in London. Ian, good to have you on the show. Uh, what's your reaction to this set of comments about the balcony photo yesterday being too white? I, th I think for me, I want to see really a united royal family. That, that's point number one, because I think the strength of the royal family together, and I'm talking about Harry and Meghan as well, all of them together make a much stronger brand value for Britain. I want Great Britain to become Great Britain again. I want Great Britain mm. to win right across the world. And so for me, as a really big royalist, but as a loyalist to Britain as well, I think they need to step up to the plate at the same time. They need to get back together again. And don't forget, for me, we pay for the royal family. It's the blood, sweat and tears of people in Britain, their taxes, that pay for the royal family. And I think it's very, very important they come back together again. And actually, then we can actually promote the royal family promote Great Britain right across the world and show, OK, I understand all the problems with Harry and Meghan. Um, for me, Meghan actually is the epitome of Diana mm -hmm. um, because I see a lot of what uh, uh, Meghan stands for now and the way she actually reacts to crowds, for example, exactly the same as Diana did. And she gave me goosebumps when I first saw her starting to work because I worked a lot with Diana and Meghan, I swear to goodness, is exactly the same. But 
let's bring them all back. Well, yes, I've got lots of friends in Fleet Street and they all said that when Meghan arrived, they felt they had the new Diana. Um, Ian, can you tell me about photographing Charles, Diana and William in 1982? This was a happy moment for the family, wasn't it, before it all went horribly wrong? It, it was a happy moment uh, for the royal family. It, but basically, in those days, um, <laughs> you were given seven minutes. I was given seven minutes to take the most iconic shots for the world. Uh, two cameras, one with colour, one with black and white, seven minutes, whatever happened, that's what I had to photograph. And I was told by the equerry the week before they would come and sit down. They would say good morning to me. I would say good morning back. That's it. No more talk, no more direction, nothing at all. And so, uh, first of all, uh, Diana had brought William's teething ring, uh, and she was holding William's teething ring up to look at, uh, for me to look, so that he'd be looking at the camera, and she was hiding her face. So for four of these seven very precious moments, I couldn't see the most famous woman in the world. And I was told, I can't talk to them, I can't direct them. Anymore. So in the end, I made a noise like I was dying. And uh, Diana turned round to me, and uh, she smiled because she realised I was breaking protocol, but I wasn't, because I hadn't said anything. I was just making a noise. And so she moved William's teeth ring away. William went to grab the teeth ring, and that photograph became Law Photography of the Year in 1983 because of that. And but the rest then is... It didn't stop. Yeah, yeah. It, the it the rest is history, course, Ian, yeah. and you're a very, very clever man, and you've made such a contribution to the image of the royals over the years. Um, let me tell our viewers, if you're based down south, that Ian Pelham Turner, his exhibition of exclusive royal pictures going back to 1935, can now be seen at the Lansdowne Club in London. Good luck with the exhibition, Ian. I wish we had longer, but I salute you for your amazing work. There you go, Ian Pelham Turner. Thanks, Ian.